Joining us now on Notre Dame Day is alumna Carol Lally Shields. Carol is a world renowned ocular oncologist and the co director of oncology service at Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia. She's the author or co author of five textbooks, over 700 articles in major journals. And most of what you know, uh, may not know, is that uh, she was on the Notre Dame women's basketball team. Well, as you all know, the Notre Dame women's basketball team won the national title this year. And Carol, you were a member of the first women's team. Is that right? That is correct. All um, right. I was actually, I was a member of the team even before we became varsity. And that was back in the 1970s. Yes, but I was there for the first, uh, first two years of the basketball program at Notre Dame. It Wonderful. was interesting. I'll bet. Now, what I find interesting is that uh, you've written all these articles and journals, but I understand that while you were early on in your career as a freshman at Notre Dame, you got an F on a paper. Please explain. <laughs> yeah. Please don't make that public, but I guess it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was a history paper, and um, I was just a, you know, a new kid at Notre Dame, and I remember I finished my history course in O'Shaughnessy Hall, I was walking back to Farley, and I just, you know, looked at the paper that was just handed to me at my first report that I wrote on a typewriter before we had, you know, uh, computers, and uh, I had an F. It was in the upper right-hand part of the page, and it was circled in red, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm not sure I'm going to make it through Notre Dame. But that, that, that I put my feet to the floor, and I did my best and rewrote the paper, and uh, I improved my grade. But that really hit me cold in the face. Uh, well, obviously, but you know was... what? That's how you handle things. If you if you get you know grades or things happen to you that you really don't like, uh, the best is to face them and go back and improve it. No, well, obviously, it was motivation for you. Now you've done well for yourself, and since then, uh, you've been doing a lot of writing in your professional life. Can you tell us what kind of research your writing generally focuses on? Sure. So um, by training, I'm an ophthalmologist, so I'm an eye doctor, but I did subspecialty training so that I am a specialist in eye cancers. So I deal with uh, many different, there are hundreds of different cancers that can occur in the eye. And the two most important ones are retinoblastoma and melanoma. And retinoblastoma is a cancer that we see in children. They, they come as little babies, usually before the age of one year. Parents bring them in to see us and we give them chemotherapy for retinoblastoma. And the other cancer is melanoma, and that's the type of cancer that can affect you and me as an adult, especially a fair skin Caucasian. And there's about 3,000 people a year in the United States with melanoma, and we see maybe a quarter of them in our office in Philadelphia. And we treat these patients with uh, melanoma. Generally, we're able to save the eye um, with treatments called radiation. So most of my research is on this topic how to improve therapy for retinoblastoma in babies, and how to maximize vision following therapy for patients with uh, melanoma. Of course, we save, you know, in our practice, nearly every child with retinoblastoma is saved. They don't die from this malicious, dangerous cancer. We figured out ways to save nearly every child. And we have kids coming in from Middle East and from China and all different countries. But melanoma is a different story. It's a sneaky little cancer. And even a tiny tumor like the size of a pinhead uh, can be deadly. So we're, we're working on this and writing a lot of reports on this. Uh, I get a chance to work with fellows and you know teach them the nuances of eye cancer. And I get a chance to lecture um, in other departments. And through all of this interaction, I think we've made a lot of headway with both cancers. Well, it's, it's been a great it's been a great career. And I, I do give a lot of credit to Notre Dame for kind of whipping me into shape when I was there um, as a pre-med student. And we appreciate the difference you're making in these very important fights against uh, melanoma and in and, and all types of cancer involving the eye. I, I got to ask you, talk about your success on the basketball court. You mentioned that you were with the team before it actually became a varsity sport. Uh, talk about your experience as a student athlete at Notre Dame. I understand you won the Byron Canale Award for Excellence in Academics and Leadership, the highest honor given to a Notre Dame student athlete. Talk about that. Talk about your time on the court. Yeah. So when I first arrived at Notre Dame back in 1975, 
I had a, one singular goal, and that was uh, to be a good student. You know, I, I knew it was going to be competitive. But I was teased when I saw in Farley Hall a little piece of paper ripped out of a notebook that said women's basketball tryouts. And I kept walking by this thinking, nah, I don't think I have time for this. I'm, you know, I really can't do this. But it teased me, and I went to the tryouts. And this was, you know, the first... We were still a club sport back then. And I tried out, and to my surprise, I made the team. And later, my kid sister Maggie tried out, and she made the team. So we were one of the few, the rare, two sisters playing on one team. It was fun playing with her because she and I knew how to read each other quite well. And so then the next year, uh, in 1978, we, 1977, I think, we became a varsity sport. And uh, I was elected uh, co-captain. And, um, you know, we traveled in vans. We never flew. We hardly ever stayed overnight at a place. We just, we had no funds to support us. In fact, our uniforms were donated by Tony Early up on Long Island, New York. Uh, it was, you know, it was really humble beginnings. Um, we were pretty good. We had about a 50% uh, win uh, score for the year. Um, but I've watched the team and the team has just become so enormously more talented. And, you know, even this year with the national championship, you can bet I, I probably got maybe 50 or 60 emails and texts <laughs> sent to me because everyone knows I played on the team here in right. Philadelphia. And I was so excited for that game, but I could hardly stand watching it. And even the game before, the UConn game, what a great achievement for the Notre Dame women basketball team. That was completely awesome. And we're so I've so watched them over the years as they have improved enormously. Well, we're so glad you're part of the legacy. We're so glad you're part of Notre Dame. Carol, thank you very much for joining us. Okay, thank you very much. Yep.